my dear students today we are going to learn about the venous drainage of the scalp and face okay okay we have already learned that uh, there are two veins here to drain this area of the scalp one is the supratrochlear vein as this vein is situated above the trochlear region this pulley shaped area here so it is termed as the supratrochlear vein another vein here is situated it is the supraorbital vein as it is situated over the orbit okay this blue colored vessel is the vein it is accompanied with the corresponding artery okay we will learn about the artery later now come here this supratrochlear and supraorbital vein will unite at the medial angle of the eye and from the angular vein here this remaining portion of the supraorbital vein is not seen here because it is submerged under this muscle orbicularis oculi muscle okay then this angular vein will descend downward and laterally as the facial vein you are looking that the facial vein is not so tortuous like the facial artery okay then it descends downward and laterally over the various muscles of the facial expression and then come over the body of the mandible and at the anterior inferior angle of the masseter muscle here this one is the masseter muscle this one at the anterior inferior angle of this muscle it goes uh, deep and pierces the deep fascia of the neck and then i think it is more clear now then it will unite with the anterior division this one is the anterior division of the retromandibular vein this one is the parotid gland if we remove this parotid gland from here then you can see here one vein that is the retromandibular vein as here is the ramus of the mandible and it is behind this ramus so it is termed as the retromandibular retromandibular that means the behind the mandible okay Uh, this retromandibular vein will divide into anterior division and the posterior division here the facial vein will unite with the anterior division and form the common facial vein this one is the common facial vein then this common facial vein will drain into the internal jugular vein okay and what about the posterior division the posterior division of the retromandibular vein will unite with the post auricular vein this one is the post auricular vein why it is post auricular because here the auricle is situated it is the area for the ear as this vein is present behind the ear so it is termed as the post auricular you can say that why it is retromandibular and why it is post auricular <laughs> actually i don't know it okay uh, this post auricular uh, vein will unite with the posterior division of the retromandibular vein and continue as the external jugular vein this one is the external jugular vein now how this uh, retromandibular vein is formed we will know that now the retromandibular vein is formed by the union of the superficial temporal vein here this one is the superficial temporal vein and the maxillary vein from here this one so again i am uh, showing supra trochlear vein supra orbital vein here is the angular vein facial vein and it is the anterior division of the retromandibular vein unite with facial vein here is the common facial vein and internal jugular vein here retromandibular vein is formed by the union of the superficial temporal vein and the maxillary vein and here it is the posterior division of the retromandibular vein it is the post auricular vein and this is the external jugular vein here is another vein that is the occipital vein situated over the occipital region and it will drain into the vertebral vein okay now come to the tributaries the tributaries at the facial region are the supratrochlear supraorbital veins and here the superior labile vein inferior labile vein and another vein is the deep facial vein that will arise from this region and go deep to connect with the pterygoid venous plexus okay and the tributaries of the neck are the submandibular vein submental vein and external palatine 
or paratonsillar vein. Here uh, we are looking at the submandibular vein. Okay. Now one important thing. We have already uh, talked that the deep facial vein that will arise from here will connect with the pterygoid venous plexus situated at the infratemporal fossa. And that pterygoid venous plexus is also connected with the cavernous sinus through the emissary vein. And again from this area the superior ophthalmic vein will connect with the cavernous sinus directly. Inferior ophthalmic vein also follow this rule. So if any boil is situated in this region and if it would become infected then the thrombi from the infected boil will go from this area up to the cavernous sinus very easily. Some of you have the tendency to uh, scratch boils uh, in the face, isn't it? So don't do that in this area, okay? It is so dangerous and also called the dangerous area of the face. If we uh, connect the other side of the face, it is the hem hemi section. Uh, if we connect the other section, then this area will be a triangular area, isn't it? So I hope that you can uh, tell the venous drainage of the face and the communications of the deep veins and about the dendrocity of the face very nicely in the examination. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching.